Welcome to the Laboratory of Thermal Engineering Group at University of Twente. My name is Mina Shahi and I'm leading the research line of heat conversion and storage. Here our activities are focused on three main pillars. Development necessary to improve the performance of conversion and storage materials, for example, increasing the stability of phase change material or thermochemical materials. We are also working on the development of conversion and storage systems for domestic and industrial applications that incorporate innovative technologies. For example, on development of magnetocaloric refrigerators and heat pumps, or thermoacoustic heat conversion systems, heat pumps and heat engines. We also work on increasing the efficiency and reliability of existing technologies. Our experimental activities are either carried out in our prototype lab, which we are going to shortly visit, or in our thermal analyze lab, where we work on synthesizing and characterization of new materials. We also work on development of digital twin of our prototype systems. In this regard, we are involved in the development of XTM numerical platform, which has a lot of advanced features. We have developed a module for thermochemical energy storage systems at different scales, and that is coupled to XTM software. Now, let us look into a few experimental setups in our lab. Thermochemical energy storage work for energy production. The whole concept is about an exothermic reaction uh, which takes place inside a packed bed reactor. The setup is, uh, consists of a reactor, a packed bed reactor, a bubble column humidifier to provide humid air, thermocouples, uh, relative humidity sensors, which is one of the most important part of this setup, and also pressure gauge. The reaction uh, between the water vapor and the thermochemical material, which is potassium carbonate in this study, takes place inside the reactor. The reaction inside the reactor takes place by producing water vapor in, uh, to the thermochemical material, which is potassium carbonate, in an exothermic reversible reaction. Agglomeration is one of the drawbacks of these methods, which prevent uh, later water uptakes in the process. By using our uh, my, uh, micro CTS scanners, uh, we can look into the structure of the particles, but also we can study uh, how the porosity changes during the cycles uh, in, inside the bed. Furthermore, we can also study the physics happening inside the bed by using our in-house uh, unique numerical model uh, to study the interaction and uh, the interaction between the particles and also the interaction with the particles and the, and the flow. Material characterization and fabrication is one part of our research. One part of our lab, uh, which is also referred as a clean lab, is uh, equipped with uh, thermal uh, analyzing facilities like light flash DSC SDA, which we can study the characterization of the uh, thermochemical materials. Uh, my project is mostly focused on synthesizing advanced energy storage materials. Uh, for solar-driven daily heat storage purposes for domestic applications. On the other hand, to be able to test my systems in the lab, not to be dealing with some adverse climatic conditions, to be independent on it. I should have also considered designing and constructing a solar simulator in the lab. Uh, so far, many mesmerizing achievements have been obtained in this area of science. However, if I'm going to uh, differentiate my work, the previous ones. Uh, the differences can be categorized into three main different areas. Integration of absorber and heat storage medium, PCM synthesis per se, as well as the light concentration. Regarding the previous works, they were using the absorber plate as a component and the PCM or phase change material or PCM as another component uh, for heat storage medium. Uh, in our work, we've integrated these two both in order to reduce the cost of material, 
because our PCM is of highly sufficient absorptivity so that it can not only store data, also absorb the considerable amount of incident light. In our project, we've used six 1,000 wattage luminaires in order to mimic the solar radiation in the lab. The ballasts of the lighting system are voltage regulated so that they can change the voltage to reach different intensities for different applications. On the other hand, to avoid any damage to the lamps and all parts of the lighting system in terms of operating for hours, we've considered three cooling fans to cool all luminaires and we've always monitoring the exhaust temperature to make sure that the exhaust temperature is not going to exceed uh, the eligible amount. Uh, as another point, both the lighting board and the base on which you can put your solar system uh, are adjustable so that you can adjust uh, your system that you're testing at different slopes suiting different heat transfer applications. Our project is about magnetocaloric refrigeration. So in this, we use a magnetocaloric material which in the presence of magnetic field increases in temperature and when you allow heat transfer to happen in the presence of magnetic field and then you remove the field, the temperature of the material decreases. So this change in temperature is used to pump heat from a low temperature to a high temperature source. And in this, we work with two broad category of materials. One is the iron manganese family, and the second is the lanthanum iron family of materials. So we take the materials and then mix it with galenstein, which is an alloy of gallium, indium, and tin. So when you mix these three metals in a certain proportion, you will end up with a liquid metal at room temperature. And this has higher thermal conductivity and lower specific heat. So this magnetocaloric fluid will be circulated in a system to achieve refrigeration. This experimental setup here converts acoustic power into usable electricity using a bidirectional turbine. It is the symmetricity of this bidirectional turbine that enables the device to continue rotating in the same direction even when impinged by oscillating flow which is induced by acoustic waves. Now this device right here has a loudspeaker that generates the acoustic power which is then converted to electricity. But in a full scale setup, this loudspeaker would be replaced by a thermoacoustic engine which is powered by industrial waste heat. So in a way, with a full scale setup, one would be able to convert low grade industrial waste heat into usable electricity at the end using a thermoacoustic engine and then in turn a bidirectional turbine. So first and foremost, the acoustic wave propagates through a gaseous medium. Now this gaseous medium within the device is typically a noble gas like helium or it can even be air. Now the fact that noble gases are environment neutral means that it poses no threat to the environment nor to human life. Secondly, the sound that drives a thermoacoustic heat pump can be generated from electricity which is sustainably produced, thereby enabling the indoor heating without the burning of fossil fuels. So summing up, sound could one day warm our homes, cool our refrigerators and even generate electricity for the world that we live in. That was about heat conversion and storage research line. But we do have six other major research lines at the Thermal Engineering Group. If you are interested and you want to know more, feel free to contact me or visit our website.